As promised, I am back today with a vlog style decorate with me video. I'm going to be showing you how I decorated our place using all of the items that I picked up in my previous two spooky decor hauls. Did my Halloween decor shopping end after part two? The answer is no. I went online and I bought more shit. And I went to Party City for the first time and that was a fun time. Anyway, I am stoked for this vlog. I love how everything turned out. It is very cozy in here. It is very spooky. I will likely be keeping my decor up until until like mid-November because it just looks so good and it feels right. I did things a little bit differently filming wise this time around. Normally what I do is I will vlog and I'll explain what I'm gonna do and then I'll set up my camera and do it. This time around I was just so in the zone that I set up my camera, I decorated and then I went back in and I recorded a voiceover explaining what it is that I'm doing. This has been such a time saver. I'm not rambling as much as I normally do and I'm just getting right to the point and explaining myself a little bit better. So I think I'm gonna do that moving forward in all of my decorate with me vlogs. With all of that being said, let's get to decorating. Louis's couch steps just arrived and he's getting used to going up and down them. I didn't expect them to be so big, but it is what it is. I'm just gonna have to move the coffee table a little bit. I just hope he likes them, you know? Did he really need the couch steps? No, he usually hops on the couch uh, pretty effortlessly. He likes to do zoomies around the living room quite often, so I figured having the steps to run up and down would be a fun little form of cardio for him. Okie dokie, so before I started decorating, I went through all of my decor from previous years and I realized there are quite a few pumpkins that I wasn't utilizing because I didn't like the color of them anymore. So rather than tossing them out and trying to hunt down exactly what I was looking for, I painted over them with acrylic paint to fit my current aesthetic, starting with this pumpkin covered in stars. I've almost completely phased out all of the gold accents in our place, so it only made sense to do the same with my Halloween decor. Anything that is gold, bronze, or silver is either getting removed or painted over. I wanted the pumpkins to be either white or cream with black stems, black with white stems, or orange with black stems. I used to love this gold studded pumpkin, but it just doesn't fit my taste anymore. So I removed the studs, which honestly kind of started to look like shit in person anyway. The adhesive was starting to melt off. I gave it a cleaning with a wet wipe and I touched up the paint and I ended up painting the stem white. I cut out most of the footage of me painting for time's sake, but I think in total I painted three or four large pumpkins and at least eight small pumpkins. It was actually a pretty chill and relaxing little morning of painting for me. I was very excited to decorate the entryway because it recently got a little makeover which was much needed. The shoe organizer and the mirror are from Ikea. The organizer originally came with a white top but I had Chris stain a piece of wood for the top to match the mirror and I think it looks great. I wanted to keep the entryway simple yet witchy so I used a couple spooky trees from Target last year, a matte black cauldron from last year as well which is gonna act as a key holder and then I surrounded the cauldron with different sized pumpkins 
napkins that I had just finished painting. Like I said, I've been slowly phasing out all of the gold in our place. It just doesn't fit anymore. So rather than getting rid of this really cool geometric gold mirror, I spray painted it matte black and I think it fits in much better. I also hung a few witch hats from the ceiling. They look so good in person, especially at nighttime. And for a little spooky touch, you guessed it, it's freaking bats. I added some bats around the mirror. I think they look really cute. I also tossed a couple LED candles into the cauldron to give it kind of like a bubbling spooky effect. I'm on the hunt right now for some bright green ones. I'm hoping I can find some on Amazon. After my last haul, I went back to Michael's. I got this cute little witch broom. I ripped off the orange ribbon that it came with. It didn't look very good. I've kept this sign out from Joanne last year since last Halloween. I wasn't sure if I wanted it in the corner by the closet door or if I wanted it next to the couch out of the way. In the end, I moved it next to the couch and I put this skull with a witch hat in its place. You'll see the skull really making its rounds throughout this vlog. Onto the kitchen, one of my favorite places to decorate. In my last haul, I shared a few clips of how I rearranged my coffee mug rack, so I'll speed through it here. My mug collection has gotten so out of control that I might need to start storing some of my mugs in my office once we roll into Christmas. I decorated the coffee station with some of the items that I picked up from Michael's and I removed the colorful labels off of my sugar-free coffee syrups and I replaced them with some spooky black and white labels, which I think was a really nice touch. Okay, back to our regular scheduled programming. Anytime I decorate the shelves in the kitchen, I clear them off. I clear the counter off completely so that I can wipe everything down. Clearing everything out of the way also clears my mind so I can come up with a decor plan. And boy, did this one take forever. I must have rearranged these shelves three or four times until I was happy. I ended up going a completely different direction from where I started. I originally had this pumpkin patch sign out at the front door, but I feel like it kept getting lost because it's so small, so I moved it into the kitchen. It's cute because it points to the living room corner shelves which are stacked with pumpkins. I was starting to run low in the pumpkin department and then I lucked out when I went to Party City and I found these really nice white ones that have glittery black stems. I also added some black pumpkins. I put my spooky wine glasses from last year on display and I finished off with these skulls that I found at the dollar store. This balanced way of decorating is precisely why I always buy two of everything. I messed around with the bottom shelf for a while until I decided that I wanted to keep it simple and just display my beautiful large red wine glasses. I added these spooky glass canisters which kind of match the skulls on the top shelf, my new black wine glasses, and then I knew I wanted something in the center but I didn't know what so I took this candle pillar that I found at Michael's. I actually have three of these. I painted it matte black and I placed it in the middle. I went back and forth on the perfect skull for it and then I settled on this beautiful black skull candle. Then I just added a couple more of those white pumpkins that I found at Party City to fill up some space. I finished off by placing LED candles inside the glass jars, behind the candle pillar, and inside the spooky wine glasses on the top shelf. My vintage stack of pumpkins and cat jar didn't really fit in on the kitchen shelves, but I knew that I wanted them on display, so I just placed them on the countertop along with this cute black lantern that I got from the dollar store. I also picked up three of those. Two of them are in my living room right now. I filled the cat jar with stevia packets and I put a little LED candle in the center for some extra spookiness and the rest of the kitchen is pretty simple. I had to relocate my tea box next to the kettle for the time being. I've got my spooky spatulas on display. This little dude is living on my stove top with my skull spoon rest. You've already seen my coffee station. Overall, I just love how the kitchen turned out. It looks awesome in the daytime but it looks even better in the evening when the sun is going down. I spend a lot of time in here so I really wanted to enjoy it. Moving on to my living room, I have this white shelf above the couch that I normally neglect for whatever reason, which is a shame because it's the perfect place for a cute display. So this year I really went for it. Each decorated area of the house kind of has its own little theme and this shelf definitely stands out from the rest. I knew that I wanted this cute little haunted house from Michael's at the center and then I just kind of started playing around with everything else. I added two more of those candle pillars that I painted black and I topped them with these little light up pumpkins that I recently found at Superstore. 
flower. I painted their stems black as well for a little bit more contrast. I added these gorgeous branchy trees from Michael's just to give the haunted house a little bit more of a spooky vibe. The vintage cats on top of the pumpkins that I got from Michael's and then the jack-o'-lantern candle holders from Michael's which I filled with LED lights. I also placed those creepy little vintage characters from Michael's in front of the mansion and I finished off with a couple of black pumpkins just to fill up a little bit of space. I'm gonna sound like a broken record but I just love how this shelf turned out. I think it looks so nice. Sometimes I catch myself standing in the living room and just staring at it. It's like the kitchen, the shelf just comes to life at night. The LED candles light up the spooky trees and cast a little bit of a shadow against the wall. It's just the best. The TV stand is pretty simple this year. I went with kind of like a spooky garden scene. I don't know. I tried tucking those Venus fly traps in with my real plants, but they kept getting lost and not really standing out. So I ended up just placing them on the outer edges of my TV stand. I threw in a couple spooky lanterns from the dollar store in the background to sort of light up the scene at night. I placed my don't laugh your next tombstone in the center. I wish I had some green zombie hands or something to place in random spots to make it look like a graveyard or something. I still think it looks cute. It's just not like the most exciting part of the living room, you know? On the right hand side here, I hung my haunted farmhouse sign and because I couldn't find any more spooky trees at Michael's, I took matters into my own hands and I created my own. I found these gorgeous black branches at Michael's and I just kind of assembled them into a bouquet. I was gonna cover them with glitter, but I got lazy. I of course added a few bats in the background because what is my home decor this year without bats? I filled the remaining shelves in my living room with the pumpkins that I painted earlier. I kept the shelves pretty simple and I also placed my little Nightmare Before Christmas light projector in the corner here. It looks really nice at night. Louis really seems to love it too. He's regularly falling asleep in front of it. It's the cutest thing when I come upstairs in the middle of the night and I see him passed out in front of it. I did end up ordering that cat pillow from Michael's that I talked about in my last haul. I couldn't stop thinking about it and I'm glad that I did because I think it looks really good next to the pumpkin. I also changed most of my pillow covers to black and white to fit the whole vibe of the place and I also ordered a black and white striped throw which didn't make it in time for this vlog but we're gonna pretend that it's there. And last but not least, onto making that bat centerpiece that I talked about in my first haul. The branches that I found at Michael's needed a lot of tweaking to get them to look like the ones in my inspiration photo so I took off some of the length, I placed them in my glass jug, and then I started trimming the branches to my desired length and shape. Looking back I probably should have gotten just one more of these branches to fill the jug but I made it work and in the end it turned out really good. I was initially planning on cutting bats out of construction paper so they had kind of like a matte look to them but I got really lazy and I just repurposed the adhesive PVC bats that I have all over the house. Even though they do have a little bit of shine to them, they still look great. I'm in the mood for some kind of cake, but I'm not quite ready to make my cupcake. So I think I'm gonna make this cinnamon coffee cake by Keto Queen Creations. I've tried her yellow cake mix. This is absolutely delicious. And I think I might actually make my Halloween cupcakes out of it because I know I'm gonna be lazy. They're basically just what, coconut flour, cinnamon, erythritol, and baking powder. Pretty simple, it just cuts out the need to measure out my dry ingredients, but I do still have to add butter, eggs, and almond or coconut milk. Anyway, I've tried the yellow cake mix. I'm gonna save this for cupcakes later on, but I have not tried the cinnamon coffee cake mix. And rather than putting it in a cake pan, I think I'm gonna make these into little skulls. Hopefully they don't stick. I'm gonna have to butter these pretty well. Well, all right, let's do this. I need four eggs, half a cup of butter, and one cup of unsweetened milk. I think I'm gonna use coconut milk. Welcome to Kevin Cook Stuff in the Office. <laughs>
hello it is me again closing out this vlog i really hope that you guys enjoyed hanging out with louie and i we might see you in a part two because i still have to make those halloween cupcakes and i'm going to be doing random stuff around the house i like to enjoy my halloween cupcakes closer to Halloween, like a few days prior and the night of. I will resume my nail videos very soon. Thank you guys, as always, for watching, for subscribing, and staying subscribed, and I'll see you in my next one. Okay, love you, bye.